Hi, this is Morris again. I'm with Bonnie Corbett, and we're here to talk about the election that's coming up on March the 7th for the position of CD, the city councilman of CD7. Bonnie, Hi. how are you doing? I'm Welcome. doing great, thank you. Uh, we have several uh, questions to ask and trying to get an understanding of what's going on and why you're running for the office. Uh, what's your primary reason for running for the council seat CD7? Okay. The reason I'm running for City Council District 7 is that I was initially involved with the community to um, advocate against the high speed rail in the Northeast San Fernando Valley. Okay. And as I became involved with that, I started going to many meetings, many uh, neighborhood council meetings, land use committees, committee meetings, other types of meetings to get a handle on exactly how it would affect the City Council District 7 if they put a high-speed rail through the area, okay? And as I was doing that, I started seeing other issues of what was going on, um, other the homeless situation, okay. uh, the way the funds are being distributed, all the trash on the streets, et cetera, et cetera. And so someone asked me if I would run, and I said, no, not on your life. And then I thought about it for two months. I said, why do you want me to run? They said, because you can't be bought. I said, oh, well, you're right about that. I guess I'll run. So I decided to run, and that's why I'm running. I want to improve CD7. I don't like the way it's been ignored over the past, I hear, 20 years. I haven't noticed except the last several. But yes, I feel it's being ignored. I don't want it to be ignored anymore. Oh, wow. Thanks. Um, if elected to the C to CD7, what would be some of the goals, the primary goals to start with? The first, second, okay. grade, third goals you would uh, Um the first thing is always taking a look and seeing what's going with the high-speed rail in this area because I believe that if it goes through any of the three routes that they've chosen that it will have a devastating effect on the economy of the entire city of Los Angeles. It'll be a trickle-down effect, okay? Um, if it does go through, I want to be there to mitigate any kind of damages to people. So that's important to me. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is, and I, not necessarily all in this order, okay? Yeah. But another thing would be all the trash in the city. Um, I think it's important to pick up the trash. We need more city services out here to help us do that. Um, when you have a bunch of trash in an area, it attracts people who will kind of live off of that trash and then it brings an element in that I don't think needs to be in the area. So I want to get rid of the trash. I want to have more city services out here to help us with that. Um, the third thing is I want to prevent crime. Yes, I want to put pressure on LAPD to help with the crime in the area better than what they're doing. I think they can do a better job than what they're doing. But I also want to prevent, I want to present a program to children in school when they're at the age of reasoning around 11 or 12. And I want a prosecutor there to say, this is what's going to happen to you if you go this direction. So this is why you don't want to go this direction. Because if you put a little fear into them of what can happen, what a prison is actually like, and scare them possibly, not to death, but to scare them not to go that route. <laughs> okay? Do you see what I'm saying? I no. would like a program to help prevent crime. And that's important to me too. So preventing and putting more pressure on LAPD as far as crime goes. Those are my three major platform issues. Okay. Uh, one of the issues we have here in the Valley, or here in the 7th Council District, is the homeless problem. Mm -hmm. What do you think the City Council was? or the city should do about the homeless problem that we have. I'm sure it's all throughout the, uh, the valley, throughout the city. As a matter of fact, it's all across the country that's it the is. homeless problem. Yes. Okay. So what should be done about that locally? Okay. So the first thing that should be done about that would be some kind of mental health services. Um, in the mid-70s or 80s, I may not have my years 100% correct, there was, um, they closed down the mental uh, hospitals, let's say, or mental facilities. The, early the reason they did that was because the president, I think it was Reagan at the time, did not like the, um, the way the people were treated in the mental facilities. And that's the main reason he shut them down, because they were not, he didn't feel they were being treated humanely. 
So what I would like to do is possibly there's still a lot of vacant buildings, buildings that uh, cater to the mental illness. And I would like to see these get opened up again, but in a humane manner, much better than what was before, okay? And that will take care of a, of a probably maybe a third of the homeless issue, okay? And that way people can be monitored. I don't, people need, I don't believe people need to be on the street. I think it's sad. First of all, it, the homeowners are afraid of them, and I understand that. But then at the same time, these poor people are suffering, and I think they need our help. Um, so yes, I believe that some housing needs to be um, offered for the homeless. And then, but job creation is very important too. But you have to keep in mind also you can't control the homeless and say you have to do this, you have to do that. There has to be more outreach in that area. I don't think there's enough and I want to see why. So when I am elected as your city council representative for District 7, I really want to look into see how we can get more information out to help these people. Okay, so job creation. Also, um, we need to build, so putting a moratorium to stop building, I'm not exactly 100% that's the answer. Um, and I don't like the way it's being advertised as it's going to stop city council corruption. There's nothing, if you read Measure S, you will see that nowhere does it say we're going to stop city council corruption. So I am, I'm always a little bit turned off by something that I do not consider to be the truth. So I'm, I just think there's more to it than that. No, no one should be um, corrupt. That's the way it is. But at the same time, don't corrupt with corruption. You know? I understand. Okay. We have another issue. The issue is that the city council and the mayor have, I guess, voted or considering to vote to put aside $10 million to provide a legal protection for the individuals who may or may not be uh, at, uh, deported or attempted to deport by the federal government. We're making a decision based on what we think Mr. Trump was going to do. So what do you think about this idea of the city council taking taxpayers' money to uh, provide protection for those who are illegally in the country? Do you have any ideas on uh, First of all, where are, going, where are they going to take the $10 million from? Taxpayers' money. Yeah, but city where? Treasury. Are they going to take it away from the fire department? Are they going to take it away from the, from the LAPD? Are they going to take it away from where? First of all, where are they going to take it from? There's too many unanswered questions. Are That's they true. going to think about another tax? Are they going to incorporate more taxes? Um, are the attorneys going to do any of this work for pro bono, or do they have to have $10 million? And who came up with $10 million? Why is it $10 million? How do we know it won't be $15 million? And if it is, where will that money come from? And last, I don't think anyone can second guess Trump because every single day is an adventure with President Trump, whether you like him or not. True. Um, but I am not into um, spending $10 million when I don't know where it's coming from for legal fees regarding immigration. Now, regarding immigration, I'm a black and white person. It has to be legal. So I believe everyone should be in here legally and should do everything they can to be in the country legally. Um, as far as breaking the law and staying somewhere, well, in the United States, if you break the law in California and you move, let's say, to Pennsylvania, but they find out you're in Pennsylvania, guess what? They're going to arrest you if you're arrested. They're going to send you back to California, right? Expedite you, yes. Yes, right? Yes. So I'm not 100% believing that criminals should be given some kind of immigration status. I believe that it's possible they should be deported, especially if they're a criminal. And then you have to get into definition of how high of the crime. Is it just something for street vending? Is that the crime? Is the crime murder? Is the crime beating up someone? Yeah. Okay, so what is the definition of that crime? There's a lot of unanswered questions here. A lot of questions are unanswered. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Well, um, I think we've been through that. Uh, do you have any special goals, any specific thing you really want to do 
uh, what I mean is that uh, some of the people in the world, in the equestrian world, they want to have their own little particular needs and wants. Other people are concerned about trash dumping. And in Pacoima, I know because I live there, there are many areas that are where there's chronic dumping. People dump every night. And so is, do you have some solution, some idea of what the city should do or the LAPD should do or the authorities in general should do to actually prevent this stuff? Because there are laws on the books. One law says something to the effect the illegal dumping you can be fined for $1,000. And the same law says you can be put in jail for six months. Mm -hmm. The same law said the pickup truck you use to dump their sofa and the, and, and the chest and the rest of the trash can be confiscated. I have experienced that I have uh, individuals I knew in the city attorney's office, I asked one day, how many times had the city attorney actually prosecuted an individual or a group of individuals for illegal trash dumping? And the man said, I've been working for the city attorney's office for 13 years, I've never heard of it. If we got laws and we don't enforce them, what good is the uh, laws? Absolutely. I agree with you. Okay, so first of all, like I said, I want to start getting city services involved back mm -hmm. into the community. Uh, I want, I'll put pressure. I heard from someone that um, our public works person, I believe uh, another candidate who's running, mentioned that she particularly didn't address an issue because the city council person did not put pressure on her for that particular issue. So we all know that putting pressure on something will have uh, some kind of consequence. So definitely pressure will be one of the things that I want to do to incorporate things getting taken care of legally. Um, I'm, like I said, black and white. It's legal or it's illegal. And if it's illegal, then we need to have it monitored and we need to have it taken care of. And that's period. Bonnie, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Okay, I agree with what you say because I feel the same way. Um, I understand the city council person gets the kind of service he demands. If it's parking enforcement, trash pickup, or whatever. He gets the kind of service he demands. Yes. And in the, in the past couple of years, we haven't been getting a lot of the services that we want, we think we deserve, we think we pay taxes to, to get. And so hopefully we can get a new city council person, lady or man, and they will actually demand services for our community. Yes. The full seven council district. The full council district, yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie.